So now what we're going to do is talk about and give you some examples of using the vocal pitches as sort of signposts for doing other things on the guitar, for actually creating the guitar solo. So after you've you know, studied your favorite singers and you, you try to get those nuances and try to understand what they might be thinking about and why they might be making the choices that they make in singing or the, the phrasing that they use, those are the first steps. The next step is to now play in between those notes, okay, and use these pitches as, uh, you know, destinations or goals, okay. So let's try it a little bit more. We're gonna, this melody now, we'll, what we want to do here is just repeat it over and over, okay, like four times, okay, and I'll play some other things, and then we'll talk about what I was playing. <laughs> So basically, what I was just doing there was, I started off playing the same melody with Fabio, and then on the very last note, and singers sometimes do this too, although in this case the, the note would be really, really high, as uh, so we came here, it's an octave higher, it's a, it's a big note for a singer to sing, you know, really high. And then I started playing phrases off of the vocal melody, okay? So when the, when the, the melody started over again, Instead of me coming back down here to the C sharp, I went to this C sharp. All right, so now that's one of the signpost pitches as well, but we're now higher up. You know, we're in another pitch range. We're higher up there. Okay. So now the next pitch, the next note that we're going to focus on is the E, which Fabio's singing down here, and I'm playing a little arpeggio off the E. Okay, and then when Fabio's playing or singing this, I'm up here. Same pitches, just I just chose to do the, the little glissando on the one. Okay, and also um, I matched the vibrato still, so there's no vibrato on these two pitches for Fabio. And I also didn't do vibrato there, but I have a glissando here, and then vibrato here. So I nailed that one down there. And then when that pitch is ending, or being sustained, the G sharp, this guy, and we have a lot of time, right? There's a lot of space here in which we can do something else, all right? So I just, for simplicity's sake, I just wrote, ran down a scale, okay? It's just a C sharp harmonic minor scale. It fits real perfectly over the chord. Okay. Just went down there. And then after that, when the melody starts over again, Bobby was here on the C sharp back in the beginning. And I'm just harmonizing that line. So I went to E, so I'm playing a third higher. You all heard that, right? And then when Fabio's singing this, I'm also doing uh, harmony higher, third higher. And what I was trying to do in that point is, you know, Fabio was singing uh, these pitches pretty strong. We're singing everything strong, but singing this one particularly strong. That's sort of the climax of the whole thing. So instead of just playing the pitches, for me to try to uh, to try to somehow match all that power, I just did a tremolo on those pitches that were harmonized to his pitches. Okay, so. Okay, it just helps add texture to, to the notes. I didn't want to change the notes and play all kinds of different notes there, because those are very important uh, structural pitches. So I want to keep them, but just somehow add some more texture to them. All right. And then again, that brings us back to the five chord. We 
which the five chord is the most what of the key? Dense. Most badass chord of the key. Okay, that's the right word. Okay? It's an official music theory term. Okay? Five chords in a key are the most badass ones. Okay? So that's where, like all the cool like harmonic minor stuff is you really emphasize that. Okay, so in this case, um, I think the last thing I played was a, a pedal point lick. Okay, during all of this space. So he's holding this out again, we're on the five chords, this is a G sharp, and I'm just doing a little harmonic minor, little pedal point thing on that to sort of fill in the gaps. Does that make sense? So what we don't want to do in this case, or what I didn't want to do in this case, is I didn't want to like step all over his focal lines, because they're cool lines. So I wanted to retain a lot of that stuff, but play over, play, play along with those pitches, okay? sort of fills in the gaps nice. It doesn't get too far away from the vocal thing, but if we take, the, if, there, if there is no singing, if we take the vocal part out, and this is just a guitar solo, it's a nice little melody with some cool lead licks in there too, but it's not me just going up and down playing a bunch of arpeggios and licks and trying to cram in as many technical things as I can. Okay, so it's still lyrical. You, you get that sort of sense that it's uh, lyrical-like. Okay, so that would be an example of um, just sort of the vocal influence, the influences that, of great singers like Fabio has had on me and the choices that I might make in creating solos and melodies and that sort of thing.